Hello, Miss Gary Bajan. Thank you for accepting this uh, interview. You're welcome. So, uh, where do you come from? I come from Northern Ireland. Since when? I was 19 years old. I have been here a long time. Uh, because I met some uh, people who worked in France and France was close enough to home to be able to go back again if there were any problems. It was my only destination. <laughs> yeah, I knew uh, a guy from Ireland who worked here and he told me about a place where I could work. I flew from Belfast to London, from London to Paris, and then I got the TGV from Paris to Valence. So it lasted in those days over 12 hours. Um, through the airport. Um, my first stop in France was Paris Charles de Gaulle airport and it was uh, very scary and then I arrived in Valence at the train station. Yeah, when I arrived, it was okay because I think I flew with British Airways, so it was in English. And when I arrived in Paris, I discovered that my luggage had been left in London. So I had nothing. So it was about midnight and I was alone and there was nobody there to help me. So I, it was a very difficult beginning. Uh, well, I left by myself because I wanted to do like a gap year and learn French because my French in school was very bad. I wasn't frightened. I was very excited and I was looking forward to leaving my country. Yeah, um, when I left, it was um, like a civil war in Northern Ireland. There was a war between two communities and in my town there was a lot of um, uh, uh, police checks and the army, they would go around quite often. There was conflict between uh, what we call the unionists and the nationalists. So in Northern Ireland it was um, uh, a conflict for those who wanted to remain British and those who wanted independence. And I grew up with this conflict. Um, for example, if you go to Belfast today, it's a very, really, very beautiful city. But when I was like your age, uh, you would go to Belfast and you would have um, patrol, armed patrols and you would have checks and you would have uh, in the shops like you can get in France sometimes in big shops now with terrorism when they open your bag and they check your bags. This happened all the time, every day. So it was very like a tense atmosphere. You wouldn't just go to the city and be, you know, carefree and do your shopping. You would go to the city, but you would be a bit worried in case there might be some bombs or something. So it was probably one of the reasons also why I left was to go to a country where you could be secure and go out and not be worried about, you know, going somewhere where there would be a ball. Hmm. Uh, the language, because I was really bad in French. Yeah, because when I arrived here, I worked with some German girls, so we all spoke English. 
amongst us. So we, I didn't really learn French for a long time. Who's your family? I have a French husband and four kids. I have a sister who lives in Ireland. I have a brother who lives in England and my parents live in Spain. Yeah, first day at work, I worked in a holiday center in the Drome near Valence. And it was a bit scary because the people who ran the holiday center didn't speak English. So they were telling me all these things to do and I didn't know what they were saying. And I had different jobs to the other girls sometimes. So I was, uh, I was a bit uh, lost at the beginning. Probably not a lot. <laughs> My job before I was a care assistant, do you know what that is? In a nursing home where you look mm -hmm. after old people. And I wanted to do nursing school. So before going to study, I decided to do this gap year in France. And then met my husband and stayed. And now I'm an English teacher. have been here over 20 years. Yeah, I feel well integrated, but sometimes people still take me for a tourist, which is a bit funny because I have been here longer than I have been in Ireland. Yeah, but I still don't vote, so it's a bit strange because <laughs> I'm not French. Yeah, we do uh, the Christmas Eve dinner, you know, the big feast, which we don't do in Ireland. And I like to have a nice, you know, meal with starter, main course, cheese, dessert, which we don't do in Ireland. I think it's probably the food culture that I like the best. Uh, Christmas. I miss Christmas because now it's coming up to Christmas and in my country it's very, very festive and I miss the Christmas songs in the streets and the Christmas trees and nativity scenes and things and in France we don't see these very much. Yeah, maybe later when my kids are all grown up and they're all living somewhere, I could maybe go back and have a little cottage by the sea and a rocking chair. <laughs> the weather, definitely. <laughs> Rains a lot in Ireland. It's not as cold because um, it's a more temperate um, climate because we're surrounded by the the ocean so we don't get minus degrees as you would in France but we don't get 35 degrees either so the hottest is like 25 in the summer of migrants who are not from Europe you mean or any any mm. the hardest thing mm. the language I suppose for me, it's maybe easier than a migrant coming from Iraq or Syria or somewhere today because I'm European. Well, I still am until next year anyway, when I won't be anymore because of Brexit. But as a European, it's, it's quite easy for someone coming from a country where there are, is war or persecution. I don't think it's easy for them. Again, probably talking about uh, Middle East migrants because a European person will be, will be able to get a job easily. We don't need visa. We can get our, our social security card. I mean, I have my social security card and I don't have any 
papers, but I know people from Middle East countries or from Eastern Europe countries, for example, people who live in Armenia, who now live in uh, the Ardèche and the Drôme, and for them it's very difficult because they have been here for maybe five or six years and they don't have any papers and they can't get a job and they don't have social security. So for them, I, I can't remember what your original question was. What was the question? Uh, what could we do locally to improve the arrival of migrants? Maybe just help them um, get jobs quicker um, because there are jobs for people who want to work and um, let them get a new life as soon as possible.